Hooray. Mm-hmm. All right, I've started recording. Welcome to the August 18th version of the Mycroft DevSync. Um, Michael is not here today, so Eric, you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I had a couple of things um, I do for marketing, uh, some just graphics and stuff for, for the ongoing marketing stuff. Um, <clears throat> but uh, most of the time I was, I was working on a GUI, so I got the, um, the common play GUI with, with uh, news done and sent that over to Aditya. Um, so we talked yesterday about um, you know color schemes and stuff for the different default news, news channels we support. So I mocked all that up. And then um, I did a red line uh, of the the layout so that you know we can get things. Uh, there's a couple tweaks that he was making, um, you know, changing the <clears throat> you know the audio equalizer graphic and the placement of the the actual icons for the news um, QML. Uh, well, it must be called news. You might call it like streaming or something um <clears throat> but anyway yeah so that's all good to go uh so yeah the idea there is that each each of those different you know uh versions will have its own qml page to pull from and be slightly different they'll be 90 percent the same but it's just gonna have different icon layouts and then the bar at the bottom whether or not it can um actually be scrubbable Depends on you know if it's live or if it's you know if it's live it's not going to be scrubbable it'll just say live across there and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, uh, that's pretty good. That's um, kicked over to Aditya and now back to the um, the other stuff. So common query and um, the uh, <clears throat> installer skills. So yeah, that's been me. All right, Mr. Smith. I have notes. So um, I noticed today my volume skill GUI showed once, which was interesting, where it actually like it looked like a circle that was pulsating, but then it went away. I don't know why. Uh, I reviewed a simple PR for Yes. I fixed the wiki VK test issue, I think, you know, for the wiki skill. Uh, I have a I have a method that I uh, refactored, so instead of having these gnarly timeouts, it basically you know looks for the right message response, and that seems to work faster and better, and everything passed. The only question is, um, and I posted it up in the dev uh, chat. It's not clear to me how you want to handle it, Gez. If you want to take it, I can just either give you the code, or I can create a PR. If I create a PR, what should I create a PR against? And I can also put it in the VK test tool uh, dot pi file, which is probably where it belongs. I don't know how you, how you want to handle that, but I'm flexible on that. Um, I think I think if we do it against the wiki skill, because the the VK tools won't necessarily be available until the next major release. So I think if we need it in the wiki skill now, then we should we should drop it in there. Yeah, the problem is DuckDuckGo needs it too, and um, they clash, but I'm assuming we're clearing out the steps file after each run. So I'll, I'll leave it, I'll, I'll commit it into the uh, wiki skill. Do you want me to create a new PR or put it on the old one? Uh, I think the old one got merged, didn't it? Or... Probably. All right, so yeah. I'll, I'll new PR. Yeah, yeah. And then I got TensorFlow Lite 2.5 running on the Mark II. I got the a Mycroft uh, TensorFlow Lite model imported into the network runner. And um, I am working on getting it integrated so that it uses the TensorFlow Lite model in Mycroft on the Mark II instead of Precise's normal TensorFlow model. And uh, that's what I'm working on and will be for tomorrow as well. All right, yes. Um, I was 
focused on, uh, well, doing a bunch of mergers um, from the community. Um, I was also, uh, because I was doing a lot of trying to get uh, the Panicor, trying to get a release candidate Panicor image out, um, but kept hitting the same stuff that we had before where it was waiting on initial data sync. Um, uh, I think partly that's because we haven't done releases since we hit that big issue last time. And so um, I think I was just hitting the, the, the same thing from previously, um, uh, which I seem to have resolved now, but we'll wait and see. Um, and then as soon as we do a, a new proper stable, then it should be relegated to history. Um, uh, the, I've been thinking about the, um, the, the hard sleeps, um, stuff that you mentioned, um, cause I've realized that it's also causing a delay in the startup process. Um, cause like in the Wi-Fi connect skill, we, um, we sleep for periods of time during the initialize method. And so the skill doesn't, because it's a priority skill, um, and it's not considered loaded until the initialize method is completed. Uh, all of those sleeps are just like delaying the startup of everything else. Um, so I'm going to switch that across to, uh, some, uh, scheduled event callbacks, um, which will, you know, allow the, the exact same behavior to happen, but the rest of the skills can continue loading in the background, um, which will just make everything set up, you know, about 30 seconds quicker. Um, and I also had a look at the, whether there's a way we can do this news GUI before, you know, actually redoing the whole common play music service stuff. Um, and at the moment, the only solution I've come up with is, is a little bit of a hack. Uh, so I'm dubious about it. Um, yeah, so I won't go into details about that cause that will be a whole, <laughs> that will take us on a dick tangent. Um, but just putting that out there, uh, maybe we need to talk about it soon. Um, or delay er, delay the the news GUI until we until we do the music sprint since it's you know fits into that whole common play group. Um, yeah. There. Do you want to go next? Yes. So um, Michael found a bug in my recent Selene uh, push. When it came to SSH keys and putting them in there, so I fixed that. That is also I got that into test yesterday, um, <clears throat> tested it a few times, and now it is in production. Um, so that will no longer be a problem, uh, which is probably not a problem for a lot of people. But <laughs> um, if you are entering an SSH key, everything should now work. Uh, it and wasn't working for me like two seconds ago, so maybe we can. Have a look at that after. Okay, because it worked for me an hour or so ago. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what else? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at um, the skill API and the um, home screen, but my device has been stuck in the um, spinning circle of death for um, several hours now. I'm not sure why. So, um, I gotta figure out what's going on there too, but that's kind of where I'm at is um, working on that home skill screen, and getting the date and time in there the way we want them to. So anything else we wanna talk about that's not status update related? No, I believe we set a record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 15, 14 minutes, that's pretty close, much probably close to a record. Damn. Um, 
Well, do you want to do you want to hear the weird hack? I mean, it's not that weird. Of a, it's not that much of a hack. <laughs> but the fact that you're using the word hack is a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, as in, I don't think it's I don't think it's the best thing in the world. So, like, one of the problems is, you know, when we when you send a track to the to the common play service, currently we send the URL and a mime type in the first instance, and then as a follow up call, we send all of the track information. Um, and so, one of the things that I would, you know, love to see in the future um, playback system is that if we have all the information available already, just send it all to the to the play service, you know, in that first call. Um, so that then it can, you know, decide which player to use and it can, you know, render everything, you know, from, from the start rather than rendering a blank screen, like a blank player and then slowly populating data as it comes in. Isn't, uh, isn't the player use defined by the mime type? Well, yeah, there's this kind of, there's been suggestions about using the mime type um, for that. I'm just saying how it works now. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, it is included in the first message. Yeah. But like, but then to, to say the, what Derek was talking about was like, you know, for, um, for something that streams or for like the new skill, we might have one, uh, one QML, QML page for a service like Spotify. We might have a different QML page for a service like, um, Pandora streaming radio, where you can skip forward, we might have a different QML page. And they, it feels like using the mime type to differentiate between those is a bit of a hack in itself. Um, well, nobody said you could use the mime type to differentiate between streaming players. Well, that, that's kind of been suggested as like one, that's, that's one hack around it, is to like, you know, append some weird, append another bit to the mime type. It might actually be necessary considering that the skill ID is also incorporated in that message. Yeah, yeah, right. So we could map um, map like skill ID IDs to, to which page should be yeah, used. I don't, I don't know that we're going to, I don't know we're going to design it in the committee, but I'm just saying um, something like you pointed out, we should probably address sooner rather than later. Yeah, well, and it, it, like we're going to do it in the music sprint, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, uh, I didn't think about mapping the skill IDs to, to QML pages. That That's not a bad idea. It's less hacky. I mean, I was thinking about adding a, you know, a new um, parameter to the call that had a default value so it gets ignored if, it, if it's not passed in, um, you know, that essentially just adds a data object allowing you to, to pass in all that extra information. But that would require, you know, changes to the Mark II feature branch, which, you know, wouldn't be out on the mainline core. And, and so then we'd have to to check to see which, which version we're using and um, it all gets a bit ugly. Um, so yeah, skill ID, that's a good idea. I might go, I'll go have a look at that. Or show or add the QML page identifier to the message. Nobody um, will break because nobody's expecting it. Yeah, and yeah. Then yeah, that's, that's, that's basically what I was talking about, adding, adding information to the message that, you know. Um. Well, I mean, it makes sense if you're going to look at it. The proper way would be that the player by default at the common play level would have a, a default base page. And any overlays to be applied to make it unique to the service could be communicated in the initial message. Yeah. There's just not a, a, a because like currently the the initial message is a you know a tuple a two length tuple it it doesn't provide for easy injection of extra data in there. Well, then it could be added to the secondary message because I think the intent is that the primary message the intention is to go out and do any setup and establish the stream and read the first few buffers with the assumption being that by the time that's done then you're ready to render a page. Um, yeah, but it starts rendering the page from the from the first 
message. Which is why it could render the default base page and then the secondary message could contain any additional overlay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll have another look at that face. Yeah, I think the skill ID might be a, the cleanest way of doing it. Um, cool. Well. Anybody waiting on me for any pull request reviews or anything? Am I blocking anybody? Does anyone want to have a look at the news PR that still hasn't been reviewed? Oh, yeah, that's my bad. I'll, I'll get to it. To, I'll do it after this meeting. Sweet. All right. Well, then, I'll, uh, let's cut it out and see you all tomorrow. Yeah. Sure. All right. I wanted to ask one, one thing real quick. Yeah. So uh, there's a GUI element that we're going to need eventually. I just wanted to bring it up. Because I, I was testing the timer, and you can set timers, two-word timers or long timers. And right now, they... Um, they format weird, you know, once it goes out of two cards or four cards, they just spill over the card, they're too big. So we're either going to need a truncated, you know, you, you truncate it and put some ellipses on the end or something, or scrolling horizontal text, um, which I actually see quite a lot, and even in like Android apps and stuff. Um, Are you saying that? If we had three timers, we'd have three timer images uh, or icons on the screen at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Um, just have one with a number inside of it. Well, we've already got it working. <laughs> um, no, but, but we're going to need this for a lot of things. You know, uh, you're going to need it in the music skills because, like, there's so many artists now that it's like, you know, so-and-so featuring so-and-so and so-and-so. And it's like five artists and you know you're not going to be able to display all the text in one line now that's actually how a lot of these other music uh skill or music um apps on like android or whatever they're doing scrolling horizontal text to deal with this this problem um it's one way to do it or like i said just truncating it you know um and then putting some ellipses or something to indicate that it's been truncated i i'm, I'm okay with that but we we need a you know we're going to have to come up with a solution at some point. And it'd be something to be used in, in multiple different GUIs. So anyway, something to think about. But we're already seeing the problem in timer. So <clears throat> I will make a ticket for it. That's it. Yep, sounds good. All right. Derek? Yeah. Do like a bubble with scrolling text inside the bubble. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. All right. Um, yeah, we'll have to take a look at, at different ideas. Cool. All right. We'll see you all tomorrow then. Yeah. Bye.